Hello everybody, this is Russ Buecher from Gatroma Nikon and welcome to the Using the Intervalometer video tutorial. Intervalometer allows you to do time-lapse videos and other timed captures within Gatroma Nikon. And this is a real easy thing to do. Let's take a look at how we can do it. Now you need to be connected to your camera and I'm currently connected to a D7000. Let's go up to Triggers and over to your Intervalometer. Now, some Nikon cameras have this built in, where you can set a particular start and end time, tell it to capture a certain amount of images, and then you can later, in post-processing, put all those together to do a time-lapse video. But Control My Nikon has its own built-in intervalometer that you can use on those cameras, and even with cameras that don't have a built-in intervalometer. So everybody can make time-lapse videos. Now it's very easy to create a time-lapse video and all you need to do are three steps. And before you start that, we need to determine how many images to capture. So to do that, you need to think of what your end processed video is going to look like and how many frames per second and its duration. So let's say you're thinking that, well, I'm going to have a five second time-lapse video and it's going to be at 24 frames per second. So that means I'll need 120 images. And this little area down here will do some calculations for you. If you figure, well, I'll just do that 15 frames a second, then you only need 75 images. And it automatically puts it up here. Let's say instead this is going to be a 10 second video and it's going to be 24 frames a second. So we need 240 images. Now keep in mind your camera body has a limitation to how many shots it can take. A D7000 is rated for 150,000 shutter activations, which is quite a few. If you do lots and lots and lots of time lapses, you're going to burn through a lot of those activations. Some cameras have higher activations and some lower. So this is something to keep in mind when you're doing these and quite often when I go to do a time lapse I'll take up my old D80 and use that instead of my newer D7000. So let's set this up so that it's going to capture 240 images and let's say we capture them every 10 seconds. When I start it will start capturing those images and then it will stop whenever I press the stop button. So all we need to do is say when to start, when the start button is pressed, capture image every 10 seconds, then I'll stop when the stop button is pressed. Okay, so let's give it a try. So we'll hit start. So let's let that run a little bit, and I'm just going to go to where these images are stored. And they're stored here under the settings for your profile, you've specified it's going to go under C colon backslash images. So if I look at that folder, when we create a time lapse, it'll create a subfolder, just like a focus stack or a bracketing session would, and inside here are the images that are being captured. Now I'm using the at date time one file token, so it's putting a date timestamp for the name you could use at session counter one here instead, which will start it off as 0.jpg, the 1.jpg, 2.jpg, and so on. Now for more information on how to use file tokens, check out the Using Files and Folders video tutorial. So that's going to run for a while, but we're just going to stop this. We're not going to wait for all 240 images to be captured and we'll just stop it and that's it. Okay, so that's a very basic time-lapse capture. Now instead we could tell it to capture a video every 10 seconds of duration let's say two seconds. So instead of capturing an image it's going to capture a video. Now this is a function unique to control my Nikon and this allows you a little bit of creativity with your camera because now instead of capturing a still image you can capture a small slice of video and then in post-processing software stitch it all together and you can get some really strange and interesting effects once it's processed in your final video. So feel free to experiment with that and uh, see what you think. 
but I'm going to put it back to capture an image every five seconds. Now some variations on this, you could tell it to start at a particular time. So maybe you wanted to do a time lapse of star trails, and um, but uh, it's you're going to go have a sleep while that's happening. You could tell it to start at a particular time, and you just specify the date and the time. If you press the end button, it will bring this time up to the current time, so you don't have to type in here quite as much. So you might say start it at midnight, and then stop it at 2 a.m. and capture an, ib an image every 10 seconds. So it's going to go from midnight till 2 a.m. capturing the image every 10 seconds. So you could experiment with the different combinations between step 1, 2, and 3. Another variation here is you can also bracket off the intervalometer and I'm just going to move this over here and bring up the bracketing screen. Now there's also a tutorial video for bracketing and um, we talked a little bit about how you could chain the bracketing off the intervalometer. So let's say I wanted to do a HDR time lapse and I want to capture 240 images and I'm going to say start it when I press the start button, capture an image every 10 seconds, bracket it, and stop when the stop button is pressed. I am going to use the adjust exposure compensation method so I'm going to set my camera's exposure mode to aperture and I have a D7000 so I need to do that on the physical dial on the camera body and I'm going to say that every time the intervalometer requests an image be captured then I'm going to do a minus 2, a 0 and a plus 2. So now actually we're going to capture 240 times 3 images. So let's give this a try. The way to do this is make sure you have your bracket checkbox checked and just hit start. Now watch this. First image, second, third. Now it's going to wait a little bit until it's time to do the next one in the intervalometer. Okay, time for the next one. One, two, three. And that's just going to keep on going. Now while it does that, let's take a look at the files and folders that are created. Because as you might imagine, this is a bit of a challenge to deal with in post-processing. Here's a folder it created under this time-lapse session. However, every time it takes a bracketing sequence, it goes into its old folder. And so this was the first one, second one, third, and fourth. So these are sequential because, and you know they're sequential because they're using the timestamp for a folder name. So now in your post-processing software you need to instruct it first of all to create the HDRs from these and then take those resulting HDR images and create your time lapse. And I'm just going to stop this. If you stop it right in the middle of the bracket, it needs to finish the bracket first. Now I'd like to uh, just recommend one thing for learning about time lapse if you're unfamiliar with them. And if you bring up the help for the intervalometer, there's a good link on here to a great website. And that's called Timescapes. And this is a dedicated website just for time lapse shooters. Some of the people here are doing some great work. One of the best things about it is the forum. And here on the forum, they talk a lot about different techniques, about how to use a proper exposure or composition or different type of camera equipment and software to use. It talks about how to actually create the time lapse once you have all the images as well. So this is a really good forum to check out to learn more about time lapse photography. 
And that's it. That's how you use the intervalometer and time-lapse photography within Control My Icon. Happy tethering.